And today in the studio, our guest is Herman Muller, and he's talking with Mary Gabriel. Well, greetings, Herman, and good evening. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you, Mary. It's lovely to be here with you and have a nice chat. Well, now, Herman, a short while ago, rang up and said, you've got to come and hear this talk by this guy called Herman Muller. So it seemed like the right thing to do at the time, so off I went. Now, I was expecting, if a guy's called Herman Muller, I thought he might be largish and maybe blonde and sort of efficient looking. With a big or, crowd jaw. <laughs> six Instead foot six. of which, I find you. Yeah. <laughs> I find a global man. That's right, and it uh, surprises a lot of people, but that's the good thing because I'm, on, I'm, I'm one step ahead of them because I know who I am, they don't know who I am. <laughs> it's a good place to be to surprise someone because it gets them on the back foot. That's very good. So, uh, I love doing this work and I love surprising people because then they come out more spontaneously. Yes, I think you're a real tease. Oh, I love it. Yes, of course you do. You naughty man. Oh, that's even better still. <laughs> um, Herman, what is your work? Well, my work is loving people, loving to be with people because they're the most interesting things on earth. Because they are so versatile, so different, that it's so fascinating that no matter who you meet, there's always something new, something you never expect. And that's the lovely thing about being with people and enjoying yourself because there's, there's never a repetition of one day after the next and everyone is so unique in themselves. So I've been studying people in many different countries. I've been to Germany, Norway, Sweden and uh, Denmark and Hungary and uh, worked a lot in North, North America. But uh, I do a lot of work in Australia, but there's the interchange of different people in the country I come from, which is also very different, which you presume is India anyway. Yeah. So I originally came from India. I've been 31 years in India and 43 in Australia. So I'm a real Australian ah. citizen by now. So I got, got to know this country well, but know the people well. But the interesting thing about my work is about getting to communicate better. So most of my work is called the magic of body-mind communication. Yeah. So when we learn to communicate, we are connecting with people in a more open way, expressing ourselves more freely for who we are. And uh, then the intellect doesn't come in your true spirit and your energy flows more freely because you're at home. So learning to be at home was an experience that came by being in many different places and different people. And the interesting thing is when I meet different people who have never met me before, they don't know who I am, yet I know who I am because I spend much more time spending the time with, with me you. and getting to understand me better. <laughs> yes. So I am very much at home wherever I go. So this is what I train people for, to learn to be at home within themselves. Yes. So wherever they go, they meet someone and when they're at home, they make that other person also feel more at home and acceptable. And then communication flows more naturally. Well, that's a beautiful thing. If we all communicated better, we'd have a much better world, wouldn't we? Well, yes, but we can't expect everyone to be the way we want to be. We have to learn how to adapt to different people. Yes. That's yeah. the key. The key is adapting to whatever environment you are in. And the challenge is... And the learning that I have had is to be in so many different places and still feel at home. Because we, I'm not changing those people for them to feel good about me. I only have to be good within myself. Yeah. And it's much easier to do, deal with one person who you spend so much time with <laughs> than to try and change everyone you meet all the time because you're moving all the time anyway. That's a good idea. So, so when did this interest in people start for you? Well, I suppose from school, yeah. because I loved my school, yeah. I loved sport, and I loved playing, with, playing sport with people, and I even trained as an athletics coach, and I taught in the same school 
that I, uh, that I did my schooling with, which, which was in uh, northern India. Yeah. And uh, then I worked in the tea plantations where we had a large number of labor force from 800 to 1200 people. So you're constantly mm. working with people. Yes. I worked nine years in the tea plantation. Then I, when I moved to Australia, I got a job already in Papua New Guinea where I worked for 11 years in Papua New Guinea. Yeah. And there also in big, big areas, we're meeting lots of people. When I did move to Australia, what really brought me into this work, would you like to know what really made me change? I'd love from to know. From the business or from the administration and controlling large numbers of people and understanding them, they were my groundwork. Yes. When I found that different people in different environments are still at home in their environment, and we need to learn to adapt to what they are doing and uh, let go of expectation of them to understand me, but me to understand them because they are at home in their place. Ah, yes. So what yes. really brought me into this work was when I came to Australia and started working in Australia, I worked in intellectual handicap services. And at that time, there were about 200 clients from a psychiatric hospital that were moved into a normalization environment. And in the seven and a half years that I was there, I found their just giving them a normalized living instead of being uh, 30 people in a ward strapped to their beds and restrained mm -hmm. because of the numbers that they had to deal with and the personal danger they may be for themselves or for others in the ward. They were under very heavy medication for 18 to 20 years. When they moved into an environment where they were given the natural things like you and I would experience or would like to experience, they had a bedroom, they had, uh, two of them to a bedroom, they had normalized, taught how to toilet train themselves, how to dress themselves, yes. how to eat. It was amazing that in the seven and a half years that I was there, the medication that they were on were reduced to about 30 to 40 percent, mm -hmm. some of them 50 percent, some of them maybe even more than that. And uh, they learned to do so many things that a human being is meant to be. After all, they are our children. So you and were we treating them like to have humans. Them up. You were treating them like human beings. Well, we were training them to be accepted yeah. as one of us, but yeah. also to do things for themselves so yeah. they could learn to do things. So what was happening there was as someone actually works and acts and sees and does things, we build new neural networks from the brain that is connected to our body, which is called behavior. Mm. Behavior is being what I have here. Yes. And when I'm wired in and rewired in for new behavior, it's amazing how many new neurons, neurons in the brain can create in, in just a few years. It became millions of different new behavior patterns are created by just exposure and the opportunity to use your hands and your feet and your words and your mouth and to do different things. They are things that are wired into your body and become automatic part of behavior. Yes. Behavior is not thinking. Behavior is just being. Yes. Being and living it. So if a change in environment and safety and patience and compassion come in there. The human being, through his own primordial need of warmth and safety and acceptance of who they are, he changes a huge amount of behavior patterns that are so wonderful to absorb that it can happen in such a short time. So as soon as I experienced something that was so different from the work I had experienced where I was ordering people and telling them what to do yeah. and conforming to certain methodologies, to, to see them change just by treating them well. So I trained as a hypnotherapist and NLP practitioner yeah. and I did many other forms of therapy. But when I saw this happening, I said, well, this is the place where we have to incorporate yeah. the atmosphere in which a person lives in and how they comfortable they can feel in that and therefore they can do things that they, you never would imagine that was physically or mentally or emotionally capable. So I designed a methodology <clears throat> of creating 
uh, a therapy session, which we call it a therapy session, where a person, uh, with a group of people, we spend six, from eight to ten to eleven hours a day looking at each other, communicating with each other in a safe environment through a set system which I develop, which is, trains them for focus, looking at a person in the eyes, being centered in yourself, and by doing that, that person knows they're safe and comfortable. Because if you look into someone's eyes steadily, without a flicker, that soul listens to you and can see a soul inside you listening. Because the light that we're looking at each other is the same light that I see you, and you see me through the same light. How come we see ourselves different or doubt each other? It's only the makeup of our human body that is made up of life experiences that make us different. But in the light of God or light of creation or the light of the sun which we see each other, we are all seeing the same light. We both breathe the same air. So the differences we have are only certain characteristics that are developed through our DNA, through our genetic inheritance and our actions and reactions with each other. So if we look at someone steadily in the eyes and talk to them, and breathe and feel at home, automatically that person also starts to feel at home and relax. Yeah. When that is happening, then more of your sensory mechanism starts to be able to absorb what the presence is and how we are learning to communicate because the analytical mind lets go of memories of the past because it's enjoying a new experience. As it has a new experience, that brain is getting a new picture connected to new responses in your body which are much more sensory because you're being really looked at and focused, you start to feel good in yourself, you start to come home yeah. and notice your own feelings and that person also comes home and notices their own feelings so the communication is of a very deep sense of awareness within each other. As soon as we can create that, we are much more able to express our true potentials. And those experiences and those habits that I have created to be protective and honor your space and not intrude on you and follow so many regulations that were put on this little boy who wanted to play up and have a lot of fun and could get up to mischief and not allowed to and must behave like this with this person, that with the other person. Yes. Those start to melt away because the joy of being able to be free and accepted and also accept the others is so overwhelming that your primordial needs of safety, survival and nurturing, they all melt away. Because oh. then you start to perceive the, the beauty that you're yeah. looking inside. But it's not the beauty that you really see, but your response inside you that you're really feeling inside you. And that's when you're coming home. It sounds like a beautiful world, Herman. It is a beautiful world. It's, and the only world I feel is my world. Yes. It's not the world out there. It's my response to the world. Because two of us are in the same world and we still have different responses. So I started to realize it's my world that I have to live in. My, how I feel in the world, not yeah. the world. So if each one of us could feel at home in their own world, you get a group together and they're all at home in the world. Yeah. Because it's really the same world for all of us, except we are our own uh, comfort within ourselves is what really makes us comfortable. So the whole work I do is now being designed into a methodology of step-by-step -step training groups to be at home with themselves. And it has been organized in such a systematic way because I've had the experience of training systematically, working management systematically, doing things step-by-step -step in the right order. So when I designed this whole a training program is all being done step by step and all of it is 
practical. There's no yeah. academic experience needed to be a human being. <laughs> no. There's no academic <laughs> new, uh, experience to be how you can be uh, experience to be how you can be happy in yourself. Yeah. There's no such a thing. You can't learn it from a book. You can't lo lo learn it from reading TV and reading the greatest authors on, in the world. You have to find that through your own experience. Yes. So it's an experiential program where we learn how to live in this world. It's a lifestyle therapy. So that what you learn in you, no matter which profession you may be in, you'll be, add, be able to add that component of being more composed within yourself, more at home within yourself, and allowing more of your own potential to come out without any uh, doubts about whether you will be accepted or not because you know in yourself you're doing the best you can because you've spent time checking it out. Yes. And not checking it out through somebody else's opinion but checking it out through your own opinion of yourself. In so other you're words, minding your own business. Well, yes, but I it's suppose. also self-confidence. Yes. Self-confidence yes. means self-confidence. I'm confiding yes. in me. Yes. Not in your opinion or your opinion or someone else's opinion, but in my but own in opinion. Your, yes. That is self-confidence. So I start to listen within me. And in doing that, gives you an opportunity to listen within you. Oh, for, yes. And when we are both at home listening to ourselves, then a greater expression comes out of our own self because we are much more relaxed. So that's what re releases our potential characteristics because a lot of the potential characteristics were restrained in my growing up because I had to learn about the world, the environment, the customs of other people, the sure. requirements of other people, how I should behave and what should be done and what should not be done. There's so many shoulds and should nots that we often lose context of who mm. I could. But all that was important in your formation, wasn't it? Oh yes, it gives us a groundwork, but there comes a time in your life where you want to find your own freedom and your own personality Yes. and want to express the true light of your soul. Yes. <laughs> because the light, soul of the light is controlled so much by the personality which is really created by other people's requirements. Yes. And we are learning to be more truthful to our own requirement so that we can be add something new and not repeat what I've been told by somebody else. Well, I think all the world's great sages of all sorts were really saying something like that, weren't they? Always, yes, because they, they already have listened inside. Yes. We are learning to put that into actual human behavior yeah. by actually acting it out and practicing it. So my whole workshop is designed to have a five-step method of studying people, organizing their selves to look at their bodies and study each other and acknowledge each other. And in that way, we are adding a facet to lifestyle. So it's called therapy, psychosomatic therapy. Psyche is the soul and soma is your human body. So yes. your soul and body and soul can work together. Yes. And therefore we have a deeper sense of awareness and oneness within ourselves. So the, the institute's name, would you like to know? The yes, name I of the institute is the Australasian Institute of Psychosomatic Therapy. Right. Where we teach you body-mind analysis, face analysis, hands analysis, learning about okay. the feet, learning about your inner internal emotional anatomy. And by getting to understand that over... Uh, six days of 11 hours a day, you wow. learn a lot of work because I bet you do. that's mm. 66 hours of one-to-one -one personal therapy. Yes. And there's never, I think, an opportunity that anyone has in the world where someone is going to give you six, uh, 11 hours a day of personal attention only for your sake. And that's huge in as much as nurturing, being acknowledged, being felt, that you're worth it and someone looks into your eyes and really looks into your eyes in a way that we really know how to connect with each other. Well, that sounds like a mighty powerful course, Herman. 
Yes. Maybe I might do it one day. <laughs> well, it's been recognized by the government and therefore is now good. accredited. Yeah, we good. take it from Certificate 3 yeah. to Master Practitioner and right yeah. up to a diploma level so that we can spread the message around mm. as fast as possible to improve our lifestyle. Because it's not about a particular profession as such. It's about creating a better lifestyle so wherever you go, you will be healthier, stronger, and more emotionally and physically centered in yourself. Well, Herman, I certainly think that the more people that do your course, the better things are going to be around this planet. So thank you for speaking with us. It's most fascinating. And uh, we're going to hear more of you in the future, I think. I'm Mary Gabriel. <laughs>